So saturation means several things. The most important thing you need to remember about saturation is this right here. P S I G, which is pounds per square inch gauge or pressure gauge, converted to temperature. I'm going to add several things to it, but if there's nothing else you remember about saturation, I want you to remember that. I want you to know that so well to when I say, uh, hey man, what's saturation? PSIG converted to temperature. Oh, good. Uh, hey man, what's saturation? PSIG converted to temperature. Do you know what saturation is? PSIG converted to temperature. Hey, what's saturation? PSIG converted to temperature. I'll just be boom, just like that. Anytime somebody's just having casual conversation, oh yeah, some saturation. PSIG converted to temperature. Boom. Right there. Here's why. 119 PSIG converts to a saturation temperature of 41. 316 PSIG is going to convert to a saturation temperature 99. That's, that's the most important. If nothing else, you don't have to remember all the science, everything that's happening. If you understand it, it's definitely going to put you way ahead. If nothing else, remember that pressure converts to a saturated temperature. Okay? Now, you're like, what? That doesn't mean nothing. Now let's put the, the whys behind it. Saturation has another meaning. It also means boiling point. So if my pressure is 119, I have a saturated temperature of 41, what's my boiling point? 41. 41. Fantastic. But wait, that's not all. For the low, low price of saturation, you get PSIG converted temperature, you get boiling point, and we'll throw in for free evaporation point, or the evaporator temperature, either way you want to word it. But if you order now, you're also going to get convincing. So over here, it also means this one word, condensing. The condensing point. How beautiful is that? Look, one word a comp means pressure converted temperature, but I can just simply say my suction saturated, and that's going to be suction is going to be a blue gauge, right? Suction saturated is what's happening in my evaporator. Or it also means where my refrigerant's boiling at. It also means pressure converted temperature. But that one word, if I say my head pressure or the high side, it also means my condensing temperature. I can use one word. What's my saturated temperatures? Well, my suction saturated is 41. My, the liquid saturated is 99. One word. It's a beautiful word. One word means boiling, evaporation, condensing, pressure converted temperature. But if that's not enough, for a limited time only, the forever of your career, we're going to throw this in. Change of state. Is the refrigerant changing state here? Yeah. Is this saturation? Yeah. Is this condensing? Yeah. How about that? Is the refrigerant changing state here? Yeah. Is this evaporation? Yeah. Is this boiling? Yeah. Is this PSID converted temperature? It's a freaking beautiful thing. It's saturation. It's a, the best freaking word in the world. It's just one word that makes it all. And it also means this. Oh, latent heat. It's where latent heat takes place. Which is the same thing as saying change of state, right? I mean, latent heat is essentially saying change of state. Change of state, latent heat, they go hand in hand. Are we, are we changing state here? Are we boiling here? Is there latent heat taking place here? One word, boom, done, got it all. Same thing here. The opposite, but same thing. And liquid and vapor both exist. It's where liquid and vapor both exist. Where liquid and vapor both exist in harmony.
Let's see photos. What's that? I just took a picture. Well, I had a picture in there. I think there's one more. I can't remember. And home. And photos. I don't know where they're at. I think there's one more. I can't remember what the other one is. But that one word encompasses everything. So here, let's say that my saturation is at 41 degrees. That means 41 degrees here, 41 degrees here. Let's say right here I'm all liquid. Here I'm about 25% liquid. I'm sorry, 75% liquid, 25% vapor. Here I'm about 50% liquid, 50% vapor. Here I'm about 75% liquid, 25% vapor. I'm sorry. 75% liquid, 25% liquid, 75% vapor. Here, I am 99% vapor, 1% liquid. What happened between this point and this point? As I'm going up. Saturation, change of state. I'm boiling. I'm absorbing mass amounts of latent heat. Did my temperature change from here to there? No. 41, 41. The heat's going somewhere, it's going into a change of state. Now, after I get to this point right here, and I'm 100% vapor at 41 degrees, can we still absorb heat? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, we can. What's going to happen here is I'm going to still absorb heat, but we're going to have a temperature change. So we're going to go from 41 to 42. Can we measure that? Yeah. So what kind of heat is that? Sensible, Sensible heat. heat. And then can I still absorb heat? 43. Can I still absorb heat? Yes. 43, the air is 75. Yeah. I'd say, yeah. 44. 45. 46. 47. As I am absorbing heat, now I'm going to have a temperature change. It's a lot less heat that I'm picking up, but it looks like a lot because I can measure it. How awesome is that? You know what we call that? Saturation. No, this is saturation. <laughs> It is sensible heat, and saturation is latent heat, so it can't be saturation. Dude, awesome! Yes! <laughs> hey, he said so cool. It's exactly right. He's like, like it's totally cool. Yeah, super it's heat. <laughs> but not just super heat. It's a superheated what? Vapor. Yes, superheated vapor. Superheated vapor. So let's de let's define superheat. All right, so superheat. Superheat is heat added, actually, let's do it correctly, sensible heat added to vapor, right? Vapor above saturation. Sensible heat added to vapor above saturation. That's superheat. It's a superheated vapor. Here was a change of state. Latent heat's happening right here. After all my refrigerant changed from a liquid to vapor, can I still heat the vapor? Yes. 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 We can superheat the vapor. And as I superheat it, I'm going to have a change in temperature. Can we measure that? Yeah. So that's sensible. So superheat is heat added to the vapor above saturation. Follow me? If I put a thermometer right here, could I get the temperature of this line? This copper line? No. Yes, I could. And it's copper. Does copper conduct heat well? Yes. Yes, it does. Good. That's a good answer. Because when somebody says no, I go grab a piece of copper and I turn the torch on and tell me to hold it. So it's, it's good. If you think I'm lying, you can ask this guy over here. <laughs> so what we do is we add heat to it. Uh, the temperature is going to go up. We're going to boil that fridge into a vapor. And then we're going to put a thermometer here. The temperature of this copper will be the same temperature as the refrigerant. So if I put a thermometer here, and this thermometer says 61 degrees Fahrenheit, but saturation because of my gauge says 41 degrees Fahrenheit, 
Can I measure that? Yeah. I changed state at 41, but my actual temperature is 61. So my actual line temperature is 61 minus my suction saturated to 41. What do we get? 20. The refrigerant is superheated 20 degrees above its saturation point. Its maximum point that it can hold heat and stay liquid is at 41. We've heated it up so much to where all the liquid's gone and now it's vapor. We have superheated that refrigerant beyond its saturation point. According to the refrigerant, it has gained so much heat that it's above its saturation point. So according to the refrigerant, it is superheated. It's boiled into a vapor and now it's massive amounts of steam. But according to you and your feelings, when you touch this line, it's low temperature because it's low pressure. But according to the refrigerant, it's a superheated vapor. And that's why I said that blue line does not mean cool, cold. Otherwise, it means low temperature, low pressure, superheated vapor. Because the refrigerant is a superheated vapor. You, the refrigerant has its own. According to it, it is superheated. According to you, that's low temperature. But the refrigerant doesn't care about your feelings. According to it, it is superheated into a vapor form. You had a question? Uh, 41 Fahrenheit, is that only for 40... 410A? That's only for 410A at 119 PSI. If I change refrigerant or change pressure, that number will change. And I can manipulate, by manipulating this pressure, we manipulate that number. Awesome, huh? That's our job. It's our job, it is. Thermodynamic experts. So let's think about, can you breathe superheat? No. Let's take a vote. How many people say no? Raise your hand. Yes. You said no, raise your hand. <laughs> How many people say yes? Okay, How many, the rest of you guys just don't care. Okay, no problem. <laughs> All right, so uh, who has a, a Google or can Google something quick? I can't say because my phone will hear it and then it will probably mess up the yeah, recording. Yeah, it, you know you do. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I love to just do that on YouTube just randomly just so people will hear it and their phones will go off. Yeah, I'm surprised nobody else has that because it's still a <laughs> Or if you have Siri. Hey Siri, so what I want you to do is, uh, what is, do you guys know, before we do that, do you guys know what the air is made of? What we're breathing is what it's made of? It's like 78% nitrogen. Oh, you're right on. 78% nitrogen. Uh, like a low percentage of hydrogen. 21% oxygen. And 1% other stuff. Yeah. Who cares? <laughs> Whatever. So let's first off find the boiling point of oxygen. So, so Google, what is the boiling point of oxygen? The boiling point of oxygen. Negative 297.3 degrees Fahrenheit, or minus 180 degrees, 183 Celsius. What was the Fahrenheit again? Uh, minus 297.3. Just 297. What is it? Sure. So, <laughs> oxygen will boil at negative 297 degrees Fahrenheit. What if it was negative 298? What, what state would oxygen be in? Vapor. 298? It would be liquid. It would be liquid. If, it was, if you were hanging out and you could survive that, which you couldn't, and it was negative 298, below that, oxygen would be liquid. I could take oxygen in the air and it would, it would just be liquid. It would be you could, a cup of oxygen liquid. It would be liquid. You couldn't do that because you couldn't breathe because it would be liquid. You couldn't breathe the liquid. You can buy liquid oxygen. If you pour liquid oxygen in your hands, it's going to be boil away at not minus 297. It's a better refrigerant than R22. R22 boils at a mere minus 40. 410A boils at a mere minus 50. Here, negative 297, kick your ass. Right? Yeah. It boils at a very low temperature, at zero PSIG. What about if you're breathing oxygen at zero degrees Fahrenheit? What state would that oxygen be in? It would be a superheated vapor. At zero degrees Fahrenheit, the oxygen would be superheated 297 degrees above its saturation temperature. Well, you, that's, well you get it with condensation and other stuff in there as well. But, yep. so we can only breathe superheated. Yes, we can only breathe superheated. We can only breathe vapor, so therefore we can only breathe superheated vapor. But wait a minute. What is the temperature of oxygen in this room? We'll look at our thermostat is 72 degrees Fahrenheit. So from zero above that 
to 72. That's another 72 degrees. 72 plus this, 297. What does that come out to? What's 297 plus 72? It's what? 369. You're good. 369. The oxygen in this room that all of you are breathing right now is superheated 369 degrees above its saturation point, its boiling point, its latent heat point, its change of state point, the point where it's liquid and vapor point, all these points, one word, saturation, it is superheated 369 degrees above its saturation point. You're breathing superheated oxygen. Even if it's zero degrees Fahrenheit, you're breathing oxygen superheated 297 degrees. We breathe superheat. Whoa. Just for fun, let's check nitrogen. Somebody find out what the boiling point of nitrogen is. Negative 3.4. All right. Negative what? 3.4. Whoa. You thought oxygen was awesome. Look at that. <laughs> Did you know you could have nitrogen in liquid form? AKA yeah. liquid nitrogen, right, yeah. in case you hadn't heard that before. <laughs> so nitrogen boils at minus 320 degrees Fahrenheit. So at zero degrees, it's superheated 320 degrees. Plus or 72 degrees in the room is, what does that come out to? The nitrogen that you are breathing right now is superheated, what? 392 degrees above its saturation point. How awesome is that? So anything above saturation will be what? Superheated, superheated vapor. Vapor. Anything above saturation will be a superheated vapor. What about below saturation? Liquid. What kind of liquid? Subcooled Sub liquid. So let's redo our numbers a little bit to represent this other side. Over here, what was my saturation temperature? 99. 99. Got 99 problems, but saturation ain't one. <laughs> So the refrigerant here is 99 degrees, all vapor. If I take heat away from it, it's still going to be 99 degrees, but there's going to be more liquid. Here, there's going to be about 50% liquid, 50% vapor, right? But it's still going to be at 99 degrees. If I continuously take heat away from it, it's going to be 75% liquid, 25% vapor. Right here, about 99% liquid, 1% vapor. Finally, right here is going to be 99 degrees and all liquid, right? Did I not change state? So on the condensing side, I'm going this way from a vapor back to a liquid. But if it's at 99 degrees and the air temperature is, say, at 80 degrees, is there going to be heat transfer? Oh, yes. 80 degrees, 99 degrees. I say yes. Heat's going to leave the refrigerant and go to the cooler air outside. What's going to happen to the, my refrigerant? It's going to drop. Yes! Can we measure it? Yeah, yeah. So what kind of heat is it? Sensibly demonstrate. 98 degrees Fahrenheit. Still, there's a temperature difference, right? Yep. Can we have heat transfer? Yes. Good. 97 degrees Fahrenheit. Is there a temperature difference? Yes. Can we have heat transfer? Yes. 96 degrees Fahrenheit. 90. 5 degrees Fahrenheit, 94, 93, 92, 91, uh, 90, 89 degrees Fahrenheit. So right about here, if I was to measure the temperature of that line, and it said 99 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, 89 degrees Fahrenheit, and it changes state at 99, what state is the refrigerant right here? A subcooled liquid. It changes state at 99. Anything below 99 is going to be a subcooled liquid. It's not just liquid, it's a subcooled liquid. So let's define subcooling. Subcooling is well, well on its way to becoming solid. It true, it is on its way. Eventually we could get there. When would oxygen become a solid? I don't know the exact temperature, but I know at absolute zero, it would absolutely be a solid. Yep. yep. It would for sure be. At absolute zero, all molecular motion stops. All life stops at absolute zero. My ex-wife's heart. It's there. There's no life in that. Beep. All right. Cool. Subcooling. Sensible heat. 
Sensible heat removed. from a liquid below saturation. Superheat is sensible heat added to vapor above saturation. Subcooling is sensible heat removed from liquid below saturation. So anything below saturation is going to be a Subcooled liquid. Anything above saturation will be a superheated vapor. So here we're boiling it from a liquid to a vapor, and then I superheat it. Over here, I change it from a vapor back into a liquid, and then I subcool it. Yes, that's exactly right. That's what's happening. That's why it's a subcooled liquid here. But let's go through. we got one more step we got to add. I boil my refrigerant from a liquid to vapor, then I superheat that vapor. Over here, do I want to have that compressor just barely pumping vapor, or do I want to know that it's vapor? I want to know it's vapor. If my saturation was at 41, and the line temperature right here was at 41, what's coming into the compressor? It changes state at 41. My actual line temperature is 41. What, what's coming into that compressor? Most likely, there's going to be some liquid, but how much? Sure. It's a, we don't know. We can't measure it because it's latent. We can't measure it. It's hidden. There could be 100% liquid. There could only be, maybe it's all vapor. Maybe it's 99.9% .9 vapor and 0.01% liquid. But either way, we don't know. It's a bad thing. I don't want to take a chance on it. I want to know that there's vapor. I never want to have less than 5 degrees of superheat coming into this compressor. I want to know that it's a superheated vapor. I want to know that vapor's coming in. Because it's what kind of pump? Vapor pump, that's right. It's not a saturated pump, it's not a liquid pump, it's a vapor pump. Yes, sir? Absolutely, yeah, but you don't have to ask, you just go. If you can do jumping jacks. <laughs> <laughs> so, I have superheated vapor coming into the compressor, right? So what's going to be coming out of the compressor? Vapor. Superheated vapor. Let's say right here it's superheated um, 25 degrees superheat. I'm also gaining heat in my compressor. That low temperature refrigerant is cooling the compressor off. So that heat's going in as well, plus the heat of compression. So coming out, my refrigerant could be superheated. Uh, on this side, it could be superheated, let's say, 50 degrees above its saturation point. Could happen. What's my saturation point here? What's 99 plus 50? 149. 149. My, my temperature of my refrigerant here could be 149 degrees without a problem. Is that warmer than the air temperature? Yeah. Yes. So what's going to happen? It's going to go up. So we're going to drop 148, 140, uh, 147, <laughs> one, I'm getting tired, 146, 145, 144, 143, blah, 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 blah. What's happening here? I'm not subcooling. If I'm at 99 and 100, 101, 102, 103, 104, etc. Now I'm going this direction. What am I doing right here? If I'm going this direction, I'm adding superheat, right? If I'm going this direction, what am I doing? De superheating. De superheating. So we are here de superheating. And it's a big number. We de-superheat lots and lots and lots and lots of numbers, but it's very little heat. We're going we're gonna to define it all more later. You don't have to write it today uh, when you get this concept down. So I have to first de-superheat it to get it back to saturation. The top of the condensing coil, the coil, that's de-superheating. Big numbers, but very little heat transfer, very little space in that coil. Like the first tube or so, it does it. Once I finally de-superheat it, Back to saturation, most of that coil is saturation. Most of this coil is change of state. Most of this coil is that magic of latent heat where it's rejecting all this heat. That's most of that coil right there. After I change it from a vapor to a liquid, that last little bit of that coil, just a little bit at the bottom, that last little piece, we can subcool it there. It doesn't take very much. It's, I can measure it, 10 degrees in this case, but it doesn't take very much energy. 
I want to know. I don't want to just barely have liquid coming to my metering device. I want to know that I have liquid coming into the metering device. Do you want to barely drink water at 212 saturated? Or do you want to drink water that's subcooled? You want to drink subcooled water. We want to make sure that we have liquid refrigerant coming to that metering device because it meters liquid refrigerant. If I have vapor coming in, it's going to be all kinds of a problem. I don't want to just barely have liquid coming in. I want to know that it's a liquid. And the only way I know it's a liquid is by making sure it's a subcooled liquid. Can you give me an example of a subcooled liquid to room temperature? Wait, what? Give me an example of a subcooled liquid to room temperature. Um, water. I don't know who said it. Sorry, water. Anybody have water in a room left or do you guys drink it all? You got some left? Is it room temperature? Boom. Water. That water is subcooled. What's the pressure on that water right here? Gauge, gauge wise, PSIG. You're, you're right. I can't, you're exactly right. Gauge pressure. What's the gauge pressure? Zero. We can grab a gauge, but it'll say zero. Right? It's, it's under just atmospheric pressure. So, under regular pressure, water changes state at 212, right? 212. What's the temperature in this room? 72. Is that below 212? All right, so at 72. If it's below 212, that means that that liquid is a subcooled liquid. It's subcooled below its saturation point. How subcooled is it? 140 degrees. Oh, man, you were right on. <laughs> Rocking it. I can't even do the, write the numbers. 212 minus 72 is? 140 degrees subcooled. You're drinking water that's 140 degrees subcooled. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> I prefer my... If I'm drinking beer, I want that beer to be subcooled a little bit more than that. <laughs> Even if we heat that water up to where it's 200 degrees Fahrenheit, 200 degrees Fahrenheit, it is subcooled how much? 12 degrees. See how your feelings, you have to separate your feelings from it? Because your feelings are like, oh, that water's hot. <laughs> okay, don't drink it. Good, done, problem solved. But according to the water, it's not hot at all. It's, it's subcooled below its saturation point. You have removed heat from it to where it has dropped below its change of state point to where it is subcooled liquid. So pretty much to make things simple, scientifically it's not correct, but to make things simple, if it's a liquid, it will be what kind of liquid? Subcooled sub -cooled liquid. And if it's a vapor, it's going to be what kind of vapor? Superheated, superheated vapor. So you're going to be talking to somebody like, yeah, I'm going to be vaping. You're like, well, it's a superheated vaping you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> right? Because it's going to be a vapor. It's going to be a superheated vapor. It's going to be a liquid. It's going to be what kind of liquid? Subcooled sub liquid. Superheated vapor, subcooled liquid. Superheated vapor, subcooled sub liquid. liquid. Right? right? Questions? It's a lot we've covered, right? Yeah. But hopefully it's, it's interesting. Hopefully it makes a little bit more sense today than yesterday. But ideally, I've added enough stuff to make it like, okay, I understand yesterday better, but now I'm more confused about this. Perfect. That's where I want you to be. Perfect. This will make more and more sense as we start doing it more and more. We're going to go to the lab tomorrow and do this. We're going to put our pressure gauges on it and get our saturated temperatures, just like we did today. But then we're going to put a thermometer on this line and we're going to read what the actual temperature is. We're going to take the actual suction line temperature minus the suction saturated temperature and find out how superheated we are. Then we're going to get our liquid saturated temperature minus our actual liquid line temperature and find out how subcooled we are because that's something we can use. Regardless of pressures, I need to know how superheated I am and how subcooled I am. And we have a little formula learn. We're going to do it in lab. It's going to all come together more and more. Oh, it, it will. Uh, we, we certainly. Actually, by the time you, before you leave here, you will have to be able to not only know why, but tell me why a unit freezes. And there is one reason. If you want to know the answer, I'm going to answer it for you in the simplest way possible. The reason an AC freezes, saturated temperature is below 32 degrees. I know that. <laughs> well, why'd you ask? Yeah. If this saturated temperature is below 32, it will freeze. Hey, let me ask you this. Is that always a bad thing? No. If I have an ice machine, that's a good thing. I want that... If this is an ice machine, this is my evaporator. I want this to be below 32 degrees. 
I want to take ice to make it go from a liquid to a vapor, I'm sorry, from a liquid to a solid, I need to remove latent heat from the ice. So I need this to be like 28 or even lower so that I can have heat transfer to get the heat to leave the water and go to the refrigerant. It has to be a lower temperature. So in some cases, we want it to be below 32. If I have a, walk, a blast freezer where it's below zero, I for sure have to have it below 32. Yeah. Right? So much to it. So much to it. If we've got, I'm sure we've got a thousand questions. We're going to add more. We're going to get into the book. Hopefully tomorrow we'll be able to get into the book on your phone, on your, uh, la your tablets, and we'll um, show you how to do, handle that stuff as well. I need to get with you on yours. Any questions? Tomorrow. They're not ready for it yet. Oh, there's a song coming up. You're going you're gonna to love it. A.K.A. hate it, but remember it.